Hello and welcome to this video from the DCGist. In this video we're going to look at Output 2 uh, for 2023, the freehand graphical representation. We're going to look at it in comparison to what used to be Output 3, okay, so it's a, the, the same um, output. And we're going to look at the requirements from the um, marking scheme as well as then my suggestions about how you would lay it out and some useful hints and tips that will help you to maximize your marks in this output. So looking a bit more specifically then at what we look at in the video, so we're going to look at the marking scheme, comparing it to what used to be output three before. We're going to look at the official output two requirements. We'll then look at some suggestions that I would give as to what you should put on this on this page. We'll give some sketching hints and, uh, hints and tips um, that should help you just to, if you're not so confident with your sketching, to make sure that you maximize the marks you get with your sketching. And the annotation that then goes with that, which is always really important throughout all the different parts of the student assignment. And then finally, I'll give a sample layout that I would suggest for you to use for your output too. Here we are then, so if we look at the marking scheme, we have uh, overall marks for the student assignment are 160 and the marks for output 2 are 20, okay, so it's 20 marks going for this output. What you'll notice is that when we compare the pre-2022 marking scheme, so the, what used to be output 3, to the, the current marking scheme, so the one that was in 2022 and 2023, you'll see that the amount of marks are the same, so it's 20 marks now, it was 20 marks before. The marking scheme now doesn't include quite as much detail, but we can assume that the criteria for assessment is going to be pretty similar. If you look, you'll see the um, things that they tell you that you need to have um, in this output are the same um, now compared to what they were before. So if you read through those. And then what you'll see then is that the um, marks go for, from the extensive range of relevant criteria considered with excellent presentation down to at least one criteria and considered with poor presentation. So we're trying to maximize our marks to get up into that 17 to 20 um, range. Okay. One thing that people ask me as well is that they ask, well, what's the story with the 17 to 20? And one of the things I say is that in all of these ones, your excellent presentation or your presentation is generally going for two to three of those marks. So you can see that the um, the presentation is kind of the, the difference in between the two and each one of the graded boundaries. Moving on to then the official requirements and looking at them in a bit more detail. The first and most important thing to bear in mind in output two is that all the sketches must be the original sketches. Okay, so in other outputs, um, apart from output six, uh, you'll be able to sketch and then scan in your sketches, which will mean you'll be able to resize them. Whereas in output two, because they're the original sketches, you won't be able to resize them after. So you need to think about that before you before you start. Then what you have then in terms of the official requirements, so it says that you need a freehand graphical representation. That artifact, I would say, should be an output one page two. Okay, so one of the ones that you compare. Then you need to include a 3D presentation quality drawing with particular attention paid to proportion, uh, form and volume, and use of tone and line, a tone or line for efficient rendering. Okay, so your 3D presentation quality drawing is really important. And when they say presentation quality, what they really mean is 3D rendered so that it looks realistic. Then you need to have a detailed communication of the main design features. So that's where then the other sketches you might put in come in. Um, and the annotations that go with those. So that's where they become important. And then thoughtful layout and presentation. So a lot of the time people try to think that, okay, the layout and the presentation have to be perfect, but really it's never gonna be possible to be perfect with layout and presentation. So what we're just looking for is for you to be thoughtful with it and to think about, okay, what size are each one of the sketches going to be? And how, where are you going to put your annotations so that it all kind of makes sense on the page and isn't kind of all over the place when you go to read it. So now after looking at the official ones, these are the things that I would say that you should put into output too. So you're going to need to have your large 3D sketch because that's in the official requirements. And then outside of that, then in order to give the extra detail, I would suggest putting in um, some or all of these types of views into your, into your sketches. So an exploded view sketch. A lot of the times that might be better done after you've done the SOLIDWORKS because you'll have a, an exploded view in SOLIDWORKS. 
um, a movement view so that's showing if there's a lid or if there's something that uh, rotates maybe with arrows to show the person that it rotates graphically rather than just writing it down that they rotate or that they move or open a detail view so then that's looking at a kind of um, a very specific part so it might be a hinge or it could be a mechanism in a clock or it might be how um, a button clicks in a mouse then a sectional view, so that's a way of showing the inside of your object, so the, the mechanical workings of the inside. Um, it might be hollow, it might have some kind of mechanism in there, it could have um, circuit boards, uh, wires, batteries, those kind of things. And then an object in use view. Now with this view, what I would say is that if you're a confident sketcher, having a sketch that has a person's hand or a person in it is a really good thing to put in. If you're not so confident with your sketching, then that might be a little bit too too difficult and you might be better off not putting that one in. But that's kind of going to be up to you and how you feel about your sketching. Then what you have to make sure is that all of your sketches, they must have some annotation and they must be rendered on this page. Okay, We don't want to have anything on this page that isn't up to the highest quality of sketching because this is one of the, the main sketching pages and the marks are allocated for the quality of that sketching. So make sure that you have your annotations in there, which although it might seem separate, is part of the sketch and that they're rendered so that they're... Um, they have shadow, shade, color, and that kind of stuff in it so that you're showing off your sketching to the best of your ability. Then if we have a look specifically at sketching and some hints and tips to help you to do well with your sketching, what I'd say is that it's always a good idea to take a picture of your artifact if you have it um, to sketch from simply because it takes away the a need for you to try to make something three-dimensional into something two-dimensional. The, the picture will do that for you already. So you'll have it a flat picture to work from and you'll be able to see shadow and shade much easier on, on it in that picture. Um, I'd use colouring pencils because they're the easiest thing to render sketches with. So you could use markers, um, you could use paint, you could use um, anything that you that you want. You could use crayons, but I find that the easiest thing to use is your colouring pencils because you can um, be light with colouring pencils, you can go heavy with colouring pencils, you can go over those colouring pencils with darker ones to, to, uh, to put in your shadow and your shade. So I just find that they work well. I'd always sketch separately, so sketch on separate sheets of paper and then stick them onto your final A3 sheet in the end. You won't lose any marks for that as long as they're laid out well on your on your page. Uh, do your sketch a number of times and choose the best one. So what you'll find with that, if you're a very confident sketcher, maybe you won't need to even think about that because your first one will be good enough. But if you're somebody that's not so confident with it, it's a good idea to do it a number of times and just say, well, which one of these is the best one and go with that one. And always, always, always use good quality paper. Okay, so don't use just your regular paper out of a out of a printer. At least use the paper that you have in the DCG room, which is a little bit heavier, and it'll make all the difference to your to your sketches. And then finally, the best sketch in the world is useless if it doesn't have a purpose. So what you want to make sure is that every sketch that you use, you have annotations that are giving some explanation. You don't just randomly have a sketch in there that doesn't have any any purpose uh, because everything in there is about communicating and that's what the subject is about. So it's about designing, but it's also about communicating. So that purpose of those sketches is really important. Then having a look at annotation, so going on from having each one of your sketch having a purpose, they also need to have that annotation which explains to the person what the purpose is. So what you have is that you want them to be clear and concise, so you don't want any extra words that aren't vital to your explanation, and you don't want to have more than one sentence per annotation. So you want them to be very concise, but you want them to be to the point and easy for somebody to understand when they go to read it. Uh, you want it to be handwritten in upper and lower case, so kind of a bit like the font I have used here on this um, on this slide. Don't do it all in uppercase. It just it's hard to do it and to do it consistently. You're much better doing it in upper and lower case, closer to your handwriting, just because you'll find it easier and it won't be uh, quite as uh, difficult to make it all consistent. Uh, use a black pen or a marker uh, with that one what a lot of people do I find is that they do it in pencil and then at the end they go over it in black pen and marker so that gives you the opportunity to do your layout and to make mistakes with spelling or that kind of stuff or, or, or in layout and then at the end go over it with your black pen and marker for your final your final version then 
Annotation should always be very close to your sketch and accompanied by an arrow. So you want to have an arrow pointing at a particular point in your sketch and you want it to be very close to your sketch. So you don't want somebody reading it thinking, is this annotation belonging to sketch number one or is it belonging to sketch number two? You want to make it very clear which sketch they belong to. And the key question to ask yourself um, is that if you give output 2 to someone who's never seen your artifact before, will they understand how it works by looking only at your sketches and annotations? So if you were to only give them this page, would you have given them enough information for them to know exactly how your artifact works um, and how somebody would use it? And if you can answer that question with a yes, I think they would, then you've done a really good job with your output too. With all of that in mind, then here is the suggested layout that I would use for my um, output too. Um, you can move these boxes around as you wish, but these are the kind of general sizes that I put them and then you could, you could move them around as you want them to be. So the first thing is that um, I would always print off the page label, so the guy up here in the top corner, and then stick it on so that you're consistent with the rest of your, your project. Okay, so it'll, it'll make, make it, even though this page is all sketched and annotated by hand, this will help it to fit in with the rest of your project. Then the most important sketch is your large 3D sketch, so we put that in there. That could even be bigger. Um, it's going to be of the entire artifact and you're going to render it realistically. The next biggest one then is really going to be the exploded view, so partially or fully exploded, so you can use arrows to show how the parts have been exploded. The reason that's the next biggest one is just simply because it takes up a lot of room to do an exploded view, but it gives an awful lot of information, so it's well worth it. Then we have the detail view, so a zoomed in part of an interesting bit of it, or it might be of only one part of it, okay, so it might be of a lid if it was for a bottle. Um, or something like that, or the hand of a clock if it was going to be an alarm clock. Then a movement view, so showing how um, movement happens, so it might be twisting or moving up and down or opening and closing. Um, you might find that you might want more than one movement view for yours, and so you might take out a different one to make room for that. Then your sectional view to show the inside is always a good idea. Make sure that you show the hatching for that, so you want to make sure that the person knows that you know how to do a sectional view. And then an object in use view. So as I said earlier, if you're confident at sketching and you can show a person using your artifact, so it might just be their hand or a whole view of a of a person, um, that's always a good thing to put in. But if you're not so confident with your sketching, it, it's not a requirement. Um, you won't lose marks for not having it, but it is a nice one to put in. That's it for today's video then. So if you liked it, please give it a like uh, here and subscribe and share it with your, with your friends. Um, hopefully this will help you with your output too. And I hope to see you back here to look at my output three video.